All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pseudorite 101. My name is Nicole. I am your host for today, and Manon is my lovely co-host. So she'll likely be answering your questions in chat. I like for my classes to be interactive. So if you have a question, you know, please feel free to unmute yourselves and speak up. You can use the reaction symbol to raise your hand. You can just type it in chat if you want and Manon will either answer or somebody else, one of our regulars might answer. She might also just read the question out to me to answer. The only thing I really ask y'all to adhere to for my rules is if you have some background noise, please mute yourself. It's very distracting. Whenever we hear, you know, other people talking or TV in the background, stuff like that. All right, so we have some brand new people. And today is the 101, so you're in the right class. We're going to spend a few minutes going over our little tools. And then we're going to dive into actually starting to use Sudorite. So what you see here is the project screen. And these are all of my little projects. So I can go into them. I'm going to jump into this Tales from the Crypt just to show you this real quick because sometimes I forget about it. I'm going to jump into here. Let's just say I've gone through. I've done whatever I need to. Actually, somebody mentioned about short stories. This is how I do my short stories. I just do one story inside each chapter of the outline. That's just my preference. If I'm doing like the 45-page books, I will condense them down into five chapters, you know, one story for five chapters. But this is my preference, one chapter per short story. All right. So you see how to just go into the project and when we want to make a new one, we're just going to click here with the new button. But I want you to notice too how things will rotate. So I picked that one. Now I'm going to jump into this one, go back out real quick. I clicked too fast and I broke it. Hold on. So now you see how these move up. So everyone that you open up, once you have a lot of projects, just keep that in mind. They're going to start shifting around. All right, so the basics. Over here in the question mark is where you'll find a lot of resources. We have the frequently asked questions. You just click into that. Our Discord server, which I did link in chat. Manal, if you don't mind copying that again for the newcomers. I'm on it. Thank you. So you'll see our Discord chat and we have a channel right here for course videos so y'all can view everything. It takes a little while for these to get put up, but all the classes that we record get put up here. We have a Sudorite guide that the company put together. You can click through that where it says Story Engine Guide. That is Story Bible. Story Bible is the new name for Story Engine. So if you click into that, you'll see it's still the same type of boxes, just a different um title suggest a feature this is where after you've played with it and you think you have a good idea to improve the program you can either do a search on a character box is a big one so i can do you know see if somebody has already posted about my idea and upvote it or i could create my own post for an idea and this is useful because they really do look at this a lot to determine what is the most requested thing, what do people really want. And then, of course, you can report a bug that will take you to email or just email or chat here. When you report a bug, I recommend copying the project URL that you are in, that you're having issues in, along with letting them know what the problem is. That way they can dive right into it and see what they can find. So again, the most important thing out of this, I'd say join the Discord because that's where you can talk with all of us and ask your questions and get some help. The gear icon is where your settings are. So you can manage your membership and billing. You'll see right here, it shows I have 318,000 words, uh, 300,000 left. 
if you hover over that, it will give you the breakdown. So it will show you when your words expire and then it'll show you your word pack words. So in this instance, as you can see, my words expire on December 21st. It's 299,000 of those that expire. That other 18,000 is word packs, which is this, that hyperlink. So whenever you buy these word packs, these do not ever expire. They stay in your account until you use them. And that is why you'll see that different breakdown right here. Your monthly words do expire. Keep that in mind. People get so surprised about that. Your monthly words do expire. With the new credit space system that they're rolling out, again, they are talking about having rollover credits for the top one or two. They're still working out the details, but the top one or two tiers will possibly have rollover credits, meaning they won't stay forever like your word packs do, but they will stay for about 12 months. So if you're, let's just say you're on that um, pro plan or sorry, the one above it, I don't know what the limit's going to be. Let's just say you have, you know, 50,000 words left that you just cannot use by the end of the month. With that new system, if they do the rollovers, that 50,000 will stay for 12 months and give you a chance to really use them up. So be on the lookout for that soon. If you join the Discord, or if you haven't seen the announcement yet, in the announcements channels on the Discord, there is more information about that system. So I recommend checking that out. Everything the AI generates, everything the AI generates comes out of your words. If you don't like the output, if you know something messed up, it still comes out of your words. Now, if the AI just gave you pure gibberish, like it was something that didn't even have a chance of being used. You can email hi at pseudorite.com and they can look into it and possibly refund your words. They're very good about, you know, understanding things happen. But again, just because you didn't like the output, it wasn't quite what you wanted, but it's still usable. You won't get refunded that. That still comes out of your word counts. But reach out to them if there was a major issue. You can start the tour here. So whenever you first go into Sudrite, it'll walk you through things. If you ever want to visit it again, you could do that and just click this end tour. And then, of course, you can change all your little settings, your fonts, text size, and the line spacing and your theme. So if you want a lighter theme, I always call this the ice cream colored one. You can go to that. Sorry for anybody. I just blinded. Oh, and I like the charcoal. Cauldron is another popular one, which is like a mix of black or gray and purple. And then of course you have these little settings. So the gear icon is for all of your settings and your word counts. And then the question mark is for all of your help features. Deleted projects. We can now actually fully delete projects. Before I could delete something, put it in here, but then I could never delete it from this. Now we have that option to permanently delete stuff here or restore it if you want. I don't recommend permanently deleting everything until you are positive you're not going to use it anymore. For instance, I would not permanently delete anything until I published the book and I knew I had all of my work saved somewhere else as a backup. Any questions on this main screen? On the help features, any of the settings up here? These cards do rotate out with different tips. This one will always stay the same. And this is what you can click to get to the classes that such as this. We're in the 101, obviously beginner. Tomorrow there's a 201. This is the one where we'll be diving into Story Bible, formerly Story Engine. Today we're going to focus more on the right features and the laser tools. So 101 for beginner and the 201 intermediate here. This is where you should spend the majority of your time. For your first month, I would not recommend going past these two classes. Stick around, do these. You'll see our regulars that are constantly in all of the classes. I like to attend other teachers' classes too because there's always something that I learn. So don't think just because you've been using it for several months, you can't get anything out of a one-on-one. Generally, there is always a tip you can come away with. 
And then we have the 301s where we have some advanced tips and tricks. It says my name on here. I will actually not be teaching this. John had to take over for me. So he's a blast. You'll see all his little crazy experiments if you join that. And you'll see we have other sessions. So aside from the regular 101, 201 type classes, Manon does French. And I would ask her to expand on this. Are you doing other languages as well, Manon? When we are in class, if someone comes in and is Italian, Spanish, German, you name it, we try to accommodate everyone so they are able to use the right in their own language. Awesome. And there is a French channel in the Discord. You may have to ask or request to be added to it, but just let Manon know or one of the staff, just let them know you're trying to find the French channel. So y'all can- It's under international. That. I'm sorry? It's under international. Okay. And then we have other little author hours like the romance author hour with Danica. I believe that's every, yeah, every Thursday she has that. We have a hangout coming out December 1st. And that's just kind of where we get on a Zoom like this and they just let you know about upcoming features and little things like that gives you a good idea of where the company is headed. It's coming up on the end of the month. As you can see, there's not a lot. Normally there are some more, but keep an eye on this. And again, you can go through that right here. The classes are free. You can take as many as you want, as many times as you want. All right. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this just briefly. The plugins that you see right here, as you can see, it's still in beta. They do plan on this being released to everyone soon. And plugins is just a way for you to um, kind of tailor things and fine tune. There's, gosh, I don't know how many plugins, but that's something you'll learn more about later. They do actually have some recorded sessions going over the plugins, so you won't feel lost, you know, diving right in. But not everybody has access. So when you see that on people's um stuff or you know talking about it just know that not everyone has access yet but they should have it by the end of this year and let's dive in so again create hit that new button that takes you to your project so let's say this is your first project you've started your story you logged out you come back on and now you want to start a second story you're not wanting to work on this one today but you might be logged into a screen like this and then you're like okay what do i do just hit that home button and you'll have that one project that's here. And again, you'll just hit that new button and that'll give you a second project. I know for whatever reason, people think they have to delete stuff. It's kind of confusing, I guess, to not realize, just go to that home and you can create a new project, as many as you want. The projects are now auto named according to basically how many projects you have. And you would just change the name right here. I'm going to briefly go over all of the features here, and then we're going to dive into actually doing some writing. So you'll see this little beaker looking icon. You can click that and enable these two things if you want them. This isn't essential or needed to use Sudorite. These are basically just two extra features that you would have to turn if you want to turn those on. Feedback. Um, well, you can read what each one does. The downside of feedback, like people like it, however, it doesn't see everything. So it'll sometimes give you feedback. Oh, you need to work on, you know, say character background story. But of course, it doesn't see that your other chapters that do have that character background story. But it still can be useful for y'all. This tweet storm, I played around with that the other day. If you're a Twitter person, X, whatever. I think you'll like this. It made some pretty good tweets. Can we even call them tweets? What are we supposed to, I don't know what we're supposed to call them now. X's? Let's jump back into this. Yeah, the X. And the what's new up here, we'll just let you know the recent changes that they've made. Upgraded to Dolly 3, some improved performance, and that permanent project deletion thing. All right, so in some videos, you will see a different layout than this. This is the new interface that was just released about a month ago to everyone, I believe. And I just call it the Story Bible interface now. 
before you would see some, instead of story Bible down here, you would see story engine. You would click into that and there would be all of these boxes in a horizontal scroll. Now we have a vertical scroll. And again, tomorrow in the 201 is when we'll actually be diving into Story Bible. I'm going to turn it on just so y'all can see. So these are the boxes that were formerly inside Story Engine, but now they are here all on one screen. So we don't have to click into a separate screen to go through that. So this is what we will be working on tomorrow in the 201. Today, we are going to stick inside what I call pseudo right proper. This on the left side, this whole screen is what most of us call the navigation panel. These are the laser tools. You'll probably have more instead of plugins right here, because as I said, plugins aren't available to everybody. But this drops down some extra things for you right here. And first draft is one we're going to play with. And of course, you have all your little settings for your fonts and things like that. This typewriter icon, it gets rid of that box. So if you're trying to do beats inside Story Bible and all that later on, you need to pop that up. If you don't want that there, if you just want that screen, get rid of it, and you can be typing in this portion right here. So it helps you kind of have a more focused aspect. This is your history. Obviously, we don't have any history yet, so we can't see anything, but this is how we would access some history if we change stuff here. And then, of course, the cards again. These will change as we use the laser tools. So there's a focus mode. I could get rid of these sidebars right here and leave this, or I can get rid of all of it and just have my typing going on, which is especially useful if you're, you know, you're in that flow and just want to keep going. You don't need the AI right now. There you go. And you can leave however many of these up you want. And you can do some resizing. All right, so let's dive in. The majority of people I'm guessing I haven't missed anything in chat. I know Manal is going to keep an eye on it, but I just opened it up for y'all. Everything is up to date. Thank you. I believe I'm trying to find the genre. Did y'all want thriller? I'm just looking real quick. Twitter is good. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm probably going to be horrible at Thriller, but hey, with y'all here with me, we will get through it together. Anyone else likes different genre? Type it up. Yeah, it looked like Thriller Um, kind of won. Cozy mystery. Definitely don't want to see me try that. I will spoil it. <laughs> I, I'm the person that Googles spoilers, okay? You don't want to see me do a cozy mystery. Is it dark fantasy is a good one? Science fiction? All right. You know what? They said thriller, so let's go with a thriller. So just yep. to briefly go over the difference, how I view this. Again, this is why we recommend going with different teachers so y'all can see how everybody does everything differently. To me, Story Bible is very AI heavy. So if you just want to throw your ideas out there and see what the AI can give you, this is where you want to be. However, if you like to do the majority of your writing and you just want the AI to guide you every once in a while, this whole thing, again, what I call pseudo write proper, this is likely where you're going to want to be. So this is what we're going to focus on today. I am going to go into first draft. Now to access first draft, it's here already. But just to show y'all, if this document was filled in, see if just changing the name does anything. No, nope, first draft is still there. So if I had stuff in the Beats box or under here in this document, stuff already written out, you see first draft disappeared. It's no longer in my list. So to do first draft, you need a blank document. And if this one's filled out, you would just create a new document. And then that first draft option will come up for you again. So we're going to jump into first draft. And unless they fixed it, you should actually see a bug that I'm going to point out to you after we're done. 
So I'm just going to use first draft and tell it, Give me five story premise ideas for a thriller novel. So what can you do in first draft? As you can see, I can do some brainstorming with it. I can ask it for an outline for a novel, give it a story premise or, you know, my summary. And this is not following. Why didn't I do it? Stop. And that's the thing with first draft is sometimes it doesn't want to listen. See if you listen this time. So embarrassing when the AI doesn't want to listen to you. Yeah, I'm just I refreshing it this right now. If it's any consolation, it's not just you, it's the same thing on mine. Hmm. Weird. Well, I actually did this. Let's see. I had one there, but of course, I'm not going to be able to find it. Okay. So first draft doesn't want to cooperate, but what can you normally do inside first draft? I can brainstorm in it. I can ask for a outline for a novel. I can do a lot of nonfiction. This is actually my go-to for nonfiction writing is first draft. I'll tell it to write a nonfiction story about it. So let me try my... One more time, then we're giving up. So normally it, um, to answer your question B, it's, it's just picky. <laughs> like I, I swear before class, I actually did it. So I don't know why it's not working other than it just likes to give me a hard time during class. So we're gonna go into brainstorm. I'm going to tell it story premise ideas for a thriller novel. I'd rather first draft because first draft will give me more, but it doesn't want to listen. All right, so this is Brainstorm, and you can do all kinds of things in it. If you thumbs down, it'll replace it. Even if you thumbs up, it's going to replace it. But when you thumbs up, it's also going to keep it over here. So keep in mind, again, every time it generates a new one, that's going to come out of your word count. So young woman must race against time to decode a secret message. Group of amateur, I'm not liking any of these. So you know what? Since first draft doesn't want to cooperate, the good old GPT. So you mean wasn't working? It didn't give you the good idea? Or it didn't give you the number of story? In yeah, first it draft? was just right. It just started writing a story. But the, like just 30 minutes, maybe an hour ago, I had already done it for another thing. So it does work. It's just one of those picky things. Yeah. Give me, give me, uh, me give me five little short story for trailer out of first draft no it doesn't react like normal but it's a short idea story yeah. all right so let's see do y'all like any of these digital dystopia everyone's lives completely integrated with technology 
government uses technology to manipulate memories. Art Restore discovers a series of hidden messages. Why does to me does that sound like Da Vinci Code? Dangerous game of cat and mouse with powerful figures. Ancient virus buried deep in the ice. Let's do this one real quick. So I'm gonna come into first draft again, just to get our story started. Why we found the panties? So I will tell it. Write this thriller novel. And then we have the story premise. So this is one way you can get things started with first draft. So it'll give you a chunk of text and then you can go from there if you need that, just that little boost to get your imagination started. I wanna let it go till it finishes. So I, yeah, I put the brackets because I wanted to separate my instructions because my instructions were to tell it to write this thriller novel because I wanted to give it that genre. And you'll see it auto named the chapters as well right here on the side. And you can obviously change it. I could rename the chapter right here or I can name it up here and it'll replace it. So this has our story started for us. I'm going to read through real quick. Going accustomed to the hum of the city, the low rumble of passing cars. Not bad. So somebody has offered them a job. So now I could either start keep writing this story the way I wanted it to go. And if I don't have any ideas, I can come over here to our right settings. So right now you see we have 448 words. That's what the AI generated here from that first draft prompt. Yep, I use, yes, I use square brackets for the inline instruction. You can see the history over here. It's kind of difficult to see it, but yeah. So if I wanted to copy this, I would have to highlight it. And then while I'm still highlighting it, press down on my key keyboard keys for copying. Because as soon as I let go of my mouse click, it'll go away. So there's your instructions that I gave first draft and then the output underneath it. All right, so again, I could keep writing right here underneath and you know type whatever. I can come over here to these right settings. So now we're at 448 words, and I just want to build this up a little bit. So for your right settings, if we slide this down, that means what we have up here so far, it's going to follow that very closely. It's not going to veer very far. It's not going to bring in very many new ideas. But if I put it all the way to the right, there's a good chance, you know, it might throw some aliens at me. Who knows? But it'll be more creative if you have this all the way to the right. I typically leave it here. If I'm doing, actually, honestly, if I'm doing my nonfiction, I still leave it here. But play around with this. You know, if you find it's close, but it's not quite there, it's veering a little bit from your story as you're writing it, slide it down a bit. As you can see on the right, it generated that one card right here. That was from the first draft. And every time we use all these laser tools, it's also going to give me some cards but I can determine the number of cards that it gives me. So if I don't want to risk, you know, the AI using up a lot of my words with four cards, I might tell it I only want one card. I typically do two. I like that option. Because I actually find I like a little bit of each card that it gives me. So with two, I have something to combine, but I'm not having to combine three or four. You can also decide how many words are in each card. So if I want to keep it low, 
I'm really watching my word count. I can do it 50. I typically keep it at 150 unless it's just having a great day and giving me awesome stuff. I might bump it up. I have found at 150 words, it's doing good sometimes. And then, of course, it cuts off because it's at the word limit. So play around with this and see what works better for you. But my typical go-to to starting out is two cards, 150 words. So again, this is going to help with the number of cards I get. Now, when you use rewrite, it doesn't matter what your setting is over here. It doesn't matter if you only told it one card. When you use rewrite, it's going to give you two cards. So keep that in mind. This key details box, that's where we can put like our genre. I can tell it it's in first person, so I'm just going to stay that way. First person, present tense. And you could put some information. So if I want to kind of give it some background, maybe I'm doing a transition scene. I want to let it know where my characters have been, what happened, and where they kind of need to go. And that helps it helps guide it more in the direction you need. So for this one, I'm not going to mess with it right now. I don't have any idea about this yet, how I see it going. But that is something you can do. Put some details about your characters. It holds 70 to 100 words. I don't know the exact count off the top of my head. But that's what you can put in this box. You have the tone. You can change this up as you're writing. We'll leave it at the ominous. Auto write. Let's do auto write first. So again, 448 words is what we have from doing that prompt inside first draft, that little story premise prompt. And again, doing it this way just kind of lets me play with the AI more and get in the direction I want to go. So I'm going to put my mouse here after all of this. It's set on my auto write. I have the thriller, the genre, the tense in my key details. I'm going to click to write. Now, if I had put my mouse somewhere else, it would read back from there and continue writing from there. So be careful where you put your cursor. Let me expand this just so you can kind of see it a bit better. All right, so this gives us our first card and the second. And then you can just read through, decide what you like. Let's read through this real quick. Stood there unsure of what to say. Okay, they wanted her to do a heist. Because they're the best. So actually, this could be, these two could actually be combined to continue our story kind of decent. So something to keep in mind, I can just take sections here. You know, if I just like this little line of dialogue, I can copy that and paste it over here and then do that for the next card if I like some more. Or I can just click the insert or copy button if I want to do the whole thing. Let's say I have this highlighted, and this comes more into play when you're using things like rewrite and describe and all of that. But if I have this highlighted and I click this insert button, it's going to wipe all of this out. It's going to replace it. So again, be careful where your cursor is and what's highlighted. So if I want to keep that and just insert this, click it there. Now again, these words came out of my word count. This came out of my subscription. When I insert it, that doesn't mean that comes out again. It came out this once, and that is it. So I am just going to copy both of them here real quick. It had a good point that it stopped. I'm going to delete this last part because I want to tie it into this one. Needs some editing. Obviously, if we were really doing this, we would sit down, go through and tie this in really nice. As of right now, it's kind of just chucked together. So they need it for a heist. And then I have the second one combined, you know, 
saying, no, I left that world behind. And now they need it to do the job to save somebody. And you can see it left off right here. So I could again do the auto write and have it go through everything. And I have a video of this on my YouTube channel that shows this better where I actually started the writing and then used auto write and guided write. And to me, that's where this really shines using pseudo write proper is if you have these ideas, you have say a partial scene and you just need the AI's help in writing the rest of it. Write your stuff in this section right here in this document, right up until the point where you don't have any ideas, you don't know what direction you want to go, or you just need some kind of assistance. And then you can choose write or guided write and let the AI kick in. All right, so I'm just going to, okay, so they need money for the high or money because the person is sick. Oh, and they're going to heist the, you know, break into the Federal Reserve. Because why not? Sure, let's go with it. All right. I could keep going this way. As of now, we've done a couple of prompts. We're at 869 words. I'm just going to delete this just to show y'all guided right. So now I want to tell it. She accepts the job offer. Uh, let's see. She agrees to do the heist. And this is best in my opinion, whenever you need to start guiding the story in a different direction, you know, I could probably keep going with auto write and it's just going to keep going with this flow that it's going. Essentially, I'm talking and might just end abruptly in a direction I don't want to take it. So now I need to guide it. Okay, I want her to accept the heist and let's get going here. And then it gives me the options again to use. And I, I could take portions of it, take them both, take all of it, whatever. Let's see. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to pop that first one in there. Now back to guided right. Let's say I have no clue how I want it to go. I'm just stuck. I don't know what the next plot point is. I can turn on suggestions right here. And just let it populate. And then you can pick which one you want it to do. Run into unexpected obstacles. I like both of these actually. Let's start off with them gathering the resources. And again, just repeating. I'm just going to plop in the first one. And now, so after a bit, you know, again, this works best whenever you're doing a lot of your own writing and letting the AI fill in some gaps. But now we originally had, I think it was 449 words. Now we're at 1,056 words. So you can see how working with the AI, with giving these little boost, it can really start helping you fill in your chapters very nicely. So let's say I need some help with other things. You know, they're in this story, they were heist, doing a high school in the Federal Reserve. I want to come to brainstorm real quick. And it really doesn't matter which one you pick. They all will give you, you know, the same kind of output. But if you go, if you go into one, it gives you examples of what you could ask for for world building, gives you examples of what you could ask for for dialogue, things like that. So you can actually pick whichever one you wanted. So give me a list of things that can go wrong when attempting a heist 
on the Federal Reserve. And this is good for like um, lines of dialogue. I did my assassin character, you know, he's got that dry, dark sense of humor. I gave it that description, said, hey, what's he going to say, you know, when he goes to kill his people or when he's threatened, things like that. It does really well. And it does even better if you can give it an example of a line of dialogue already to really help add some oomph to your characters and personality. So we could, we're setting off the building's alarm system. I would hope they'd be smart enough not to do that right away. And a lot of setting off alarms. So I'm just going to thumbs down these. And you'll see it replaces them. And again, all of these are coming out of my word count whenever I do this. But it generally gives some really good ideas. I like this one. This one makes good sense to me right here. All right, I'm going to copy it. And I could just click that copy button right here as well. You can edit it if you want to change up some words. So I'm going to come back down. Let's go back to guided, right? And I'm going to give it that suggestion. And once again, all the cards over here. So this started with first draft, just giving it a story premise idea for a fiction story, and then working with just two of the features, the auto write and guided write. You know, we're now at a substantial chapter start. Other things you can do with first draft, as I said, you can do nonfiction with it. And this is the bug I was talking about earlier. So we used first draft, and now I went to make a new document, and you can see my menu buttons up at the top disappeared. So they are working on that. So I just have to force refresh to get it back. Now I'll go into first draft and I'll tell it to write an outline for a nonfiction book about, what's a good nonfiction idea? Oh, you know what? Let's write an outline for a nonfiction book about, let's see if the AI objects. about how to rob a bank. There we go. Let's see what it does for us. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can see there's definitely something off with um, first draft today. I guess he doesn't want to answer you or to do it. <laughs> hmm. Wow. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going for it. Let's see. Avoiding detection, making a clean getaway. Hmm. Let's see how to make a clean getaway. So I'm just going to copy this real quick. Do another one. Do that force refresh. Write a chapter for a nonfiction book about how to rob a bank. With the chapter focus on making a clean getaway. Yeah, so um GD, what I would say is instead of using first draft, how I did to give it that premise and get things started, I would just bring in what you already have written because it reads back up to a thousand words and you can put an enormous amount of words in here. I think they've said like they put a, up to a hundred thousand words in one document and it didn't balk at that. 
So you could actually put everything you've had written, you know, if it's within that window in one document and then just, so let's pretend this is what you've had written, okay? So you just copy all of that into here and then you can keep writing, you know, maybe ask the AI to continue from here if you're stuck or you can start using the laser tools. This is what I this is what I do for like my 45 page novels that I mentioned. Instead of messing with trying to get Story Bible to do the five chapters, I just actually start writing in here. If I get to a point where I don't know what I want to happen next, you know, I'm just kind of stuck, then I'll start using the guided write and auto write and let it go until I have another idea. And it's just back and forth like that. Very interactive in that back and forth flow. All right. So <laughs> robbing a bank is a serious criminal offense. Y'all just so y'all know. As a result, it's important to make sure you have a plan for a clean giveaway. <laughs> okay. Make sure you're not detected by anyone and do not leave any evidence behind. Does anybody need a copy of this? You know, just to make sure once you leave the bank, make sure you're not followed or tracked. I love this. I actually kind of want to write a book about this now. Everybody that knows me is not surprised. Okay. It is important to note that it is never a good idea to attempt to rob a bank and that all of the advice contained in this chapter is meant for informational purposes only. If you are considering attempting a bank robber, you should consult with a lawyer and law and, and law enforcement authorities. Just to make sure, you know, <laughs> Dabby. I don't think he wants to see you going in jail at all. Oh, I'm so writing this book. I'm not going to lie. I am writing this book. Congratulations. Y'all are part of the story idea. Y'all are now my accomplices. All right. So let's go back to the fiction one. Yeah. Oh, did I was going to say, did it freeze on me? You know, got mad at me. All right. So let's start using the laser tools. Let me force refresh, get those back. So again, we're going to pretend, you know, like, this is stuff that I had written. I was working with the AI to fill in all the holes that I needed. And now I need to refine this some more. So I can start using these laser tools. I actually like the opening. And this nailed this opening pretty well. I actually can't find anything I'd want to improve on that. Just reading through real quick. Just a few box. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to rewrite. And I'm going to click the customize and you can do all kinds of stuff. You can tell it to add more dialogue or, you know, be snarkier, be whatever, basically. And we're going to say be more foreboding. And I'm going to click that. And again, it's going to pop up with some cards over here for me. And then I could insert one of these. Again, since I have this highlighted, if I just insert one of these, you'll see my highlight here, insert, and it's just going to replace that. So be careful, don't have anything highlighted. If you just maybe want to read through, do some editing, I normally keep my cursor at the end and I would just insert it here and then I would read through and combine different things just to make it more of what I actually wanted. I'm going to jump over into Canvas real quick. Whenever you go into Canvas for the first time, you'll see like little cards and a tutorial to walk you through everything. Once you've done that, 
you'll then have this blank screen. So Canvas is where another place you can do your outline. So I want to come down here, click the one, two, three for the outline. And then you have some choices right here that you can pick from. I'm just going to go with story circle since it's short. And I'm going to do the same thing. Write a thriller novel about a bank heist. And I'm going to click this generate full outline here. So in my opinion, where Canvas really shines, this thing right here, it works the best whenever you know portions of your outline, but you don't know the whole thing. So you might know how it starts, you know how you want it to end, but you're missing some portions in between. So what you can do in Canvas, instead of coming up here and having it generate your full outline, you can actually just generate each card or type in the card. I wanna copy this real quick, just so y'all can see and I can start it over. So whenever you have everything done, click this three dots, copy it. I'm gonna to click to go back to project. I'm gonna add that new document. And I'm just gonna copy in my canvas real quick. And we'll come back to that. So I'm gonna click down here to make a new one. So to navigate Canvas, I can scroll my mouse up and down. And if I hold the shift key and scroll my mouse wheel, it goes side to side. So again, maybe I know portions of my outline. I know the beginning. So I would type in my little plot point there. And I would just keep going through. I don't know what I want to happen here, but I know about this. It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't have to know exactly which box to put things in. And then I'm going to come, you know, I only know the end. Let me scroll out just so y'all can see the whole thing real quick. So again, you'll see there's lots of boxes that are empty. And to me, this is what Canvas does best. I've put my stuff in these other boxes and on each box, you'll see each box has this fill me in button. So what that would do is it would read backwards and start filling things in for you. So if I knew a portion of my outline and I needed help filling things in, first of all, I need to put something in this main concept box. I don't need to put my story premise, I can. This holds up to 500 words. So I could put my story premise in there or I can just let it know I'm doing a thriller or a psychological thriller, whatever, but it needs something in this box in order for this next step to work. So again, I've put in the portions of my outline that I know. And since I don't have actual plot points, this won't work. But now when I get to these blank portions, I can just click that fill me in button right here and it'll re start reading backwards. So you'll want to do that in order. So this is, you know, again, since I don't have those plot points, it's just going to be very off and not work for this story. But I just want to show you what you can do. I can generate options for this card. If I don't like this, I can click this generate options. It's going to generate three more cards for me to pick from that I could replace this with, or I can mix and match whatever I wanted to do. So to me, this is really good for helping you perfect your outline and all of your plot points. So just start from the beginning, put in everything you know all the way around, and then go back to the beginning and start with your empty boxes and fill those in. And again, whenever you're done, when your outline is the way you want it, you click the, that three dots and copy it to clipboard. And you can bring it back to here and actually start working on it. Right. Are there any questions about first draft, canvas, Auto write or guided write. Canvas is down here. Did you get that? 
uh, Nicole, if if you want to start off with a prologue, do you just label that as chapter one? Yes, especially inside Story Bible, when you get there, because you'll it'll it goes by the chapter numbers. Okay. And that's something we could look at tomorrow too to do it. So yeah, if I have one of my prologues or just chapter one, that's it. All right, thank you. So Canvas and Story Bible are not connected, but I like Canvas again for if I know some plot points, because as you'll see in tomorrow's class, if you go to that 201, when we create the outline in Story Bible, it generates the full outline, kind of like in Canvas when I click to generate full outline from that main cam main box. But inside Canvas, I have more control over what parts of the outline it generates. In Canvas, do you need to uh, save anything? You don't need to save it. Going back to it, you know, everything's still here. Okay. But again, to copy it, you would click these three dots. I've been having some trouble with it. I'll I'll continue playing with it. What trouble are you having? Oh, I, I started putting uh, certain uh, words into like box number two, chapter two. Mm -hmm. And started just typing and adding to it. And uh, for some reason, I got out of it and went back and everything was gone. It just was blank canvas again. I had no idea where it went. It should be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I've, I've tried to start again. And right now I've got one box that went way off to the right. And I couldn't scroll over there. But I think you answered that. I got to just hit... Uh, I think shift and then move to the right. So I'll find yeah. it. And there is a setting. Why can I not find the setting or remember it? There is a setting to kind of like recenter everything. Or if I just, let me see, because it was off center there. So I'm just going to back out of it, go back in. Still off center. There is a setting to actually recenter it. Where you okay. see the whole thing. Oh, is, there a, the is, is there What's a that? word limit in each uh, in each box? The gear. No, not the gear. Let's see. Oh, it's just bringing up our stuff. I thought it was like control something. Oh, uh, maybe. And then I just go back out by the minus sign, and then I center it myself. Yeah, and that's generally what I do. So, um, word minus limit inside sign. these boxes. Yeah. If I had to guess, which is actually what I would be doing, I would say it's 500, like the main premise box up here. Okay. I do not know of a, the word limit here. I just know this one holds up to 500 words. And, and if I, I go would over say 500, it kind of crashes or does it just... Uh, it would stop. It. You wouldn't be able to add any more. Okay. But I'm, I was thinking of uh, copy paste in there. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I like to keep my chapters short, whether it's in Canvas or in Story Bible Outline. I prefer to keep them lower plot points, just so I have more details I could add with the beats and all of that later on. So it's something to keep in mind. You might want to play around, see what you actually prefer. If you find the AI does better with large chunks of the chapter information or chapter summary or a smaller bit. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are at the hour. Do we want to keep going? I don't you want to show them where the classes are. So the one who wants to go and view prior classes so they can get uh, more information. Yep. So I'm just going to go to the Discord thing here. I'm already in there, so. It's not going to let me. Yeah, we have to log out the app and go back in through the uh, the web. Uh, All right. So in the Discord server, and again, whenever you first go into here, you need to select some roles. And now it's going to open up these genre channels for you down here. But there's a channel called Course Videos. That's what you see right here. And you could click into these. So I can go here and I see Miss Lynn's class. So I could click to watch the video right here. And someone had mentioned a beats of the, 
I mentioned the Evil Cinderella to someone. There's two of those. There's the beat work with Evil Cinderella, which is more like a 301, but not quite that advanced. Y'all could would be able to easily understand it. Um, we had one class where we just took the same story premise, same idea, but we went through the various outlines to see how those different outline models change that story. This is the story circle with Nancy was an awesome class. So if you like shorter stories, or you like following Dan Harmon's story circle method, this is a class you want to look at, Manon's French. So you can see lots of stuff here that you can go back and look through to get an idea. And again, the teachers all teach differently, drastically differently. It's just we teach our methods, the different things that we do. So you can learn something from each of us and you'll find you like one person's method more than the others. So go through these course videos channels and see what you like. This Write With Me, that was a four day series that might be helpful for you, especially if you like to incorporate chat GPT. But again, if you're just starting out, stick with the 101s and the 201s. Go through those. Once you feel really comfortable, then dive into like the 301s where you can start some more advanced stuff. Is there a class you would you would suggest to people to bring their own story when they already have their own story? They want to keep going with pseudo right? Is there a class that you remember will be good for that? No, because again, I would. It's really tricky whenever you're bringing in your own story, and also like Miss Lynn says, if you're just starting with so oh, sorry, I can't talk. Right. If you're just starting with pseudo right. We do not, please save yourself the frustration. We know this, we're not just preaching. We have been there and done it. I spent two weeks so frustrated with this AI because I was bringing in my half-written novels, trying to make it work when I hadn't even learned how to use it yet. So please, I know you wanna dive into your story, but if you're new, start a story from scratch inside Pseudorite, whether it's in Story Bible, playing around within Pseudorite proper like we did today, start a story from scratch. It could be a simple fairy tale. Just leave it as it is. You know, you might want to write Rumpelstiltskin. You might want to do a fairy tale retelling. You know, we've done Creepy Pinocchio where it turned into a tragic horror story. So those mm -hmm. are short, but it still allows you to play with the AI, go into all of the boxes and see how everything works. Yeah. And I promise that you. Oh, sorry, yeah, you could use their words and get frustrated and say, I lost all my words because I tried to finish the story I have. That's why it's better to get something you're not attached to. Yeah. So like tomorrow when we start here, you'll see we can just type a simple, and this is the way I, this is the how I learned Story Bible. When I finally got frustrated and I took a step back and like, okay, clearly I need to learn this program. I wrote a one, two sentence premise in this brain dump. And then I just started going through all of the boxes, making edits, and I would see what how my edits changed things and just worked from there. And it was so much better. Didn't have that frustration. So now I'm able to easier, more easily bring in some stuff. But again, if I'm bringing in a half-written novel now, what I would do is not use this. If I'm bringing something in already, partially written, I would bring it into this portion and just use the auto write and guided write to keep going. The downside of this and something that they will hopefully um, do in the future, it is a planned update, but they don't have a timeline yet. The downside is that here in this pseudo write proper area, it does not know anything about your characters. Again, you can put some stuff in this key details, but since it's so limited, you can't put some full-on character descriptions. That's the downside. So you have to kind of stay on things, but it does read back up to a thousand words. So it takes all of your style into account and it will help you continue everything. I'm trying to think, I will think on that. I'm not sure who asked the question for the story have written, but I will think on that and see what I can come up with. What would be the easiest way inside Story Bible to do that? But honestly, I 
I think it would be more frustrating than it's worth to try to do it that way. If I'm in Story Bible, I'm just going to let it do the whole story from beginning to end. And then I will add in, you know, parts that it gave me with the parts that I already had written. That's how I would do it. And I actually think it, that would take less time to let it just generate the whole story. And then in your edits, you combine the portions that you like with what you already have written and just move on and have your story done versus spending so much time to try to put something in that's half written and get it to follow along. So do we have any classes coming up right now? I see some people dropping out. I know we're at the over the hour now. So there was a 201, 301 in mine. So we are clear. What is today? Monday. We're clear. I was I was thinking the date. <laughs> so we can keep going if y'all want. If y'all are ready to stop, we can stop. There's still a lot of um, stuff to cover. And again, tomorrow in the 201, we'll dive into Story Bible. Frank says, please keep going. Let me take a sip of coffee. <laughs> How about the rest of y'all? Anyone has question they like to put in the chat or unmute and ask it? Yep. All right, so we'll keep going a little bit. We'll go about 15 more minutes. How about that? Sounds good. Okay. I got my coffee too. <laughs> All right, so this is the one that we just threw together in Canvas real quick for that example. So I could take this, you know, went into Canvas. This is what we're pretending again because I didn't make any edits. Y'all saw that. But we're going to pretend I went into Canvas. I have my outline perfect now. This is the result of that outline. I just copied it over. So I can do two things here. I could take each of these sections into first draft and have it do that um, chunk of output that it did prior. I could do that for each section. I could take out the different portions and add this whole thing into first draft, which actually sounds like a good idea to me. Let's do that. But that is an option. You know, if I just want to expand, I really like the Canvas output. I'm not ready to go into Story Bible and do this outline. I just kind of want to still keep playing here. I could just expand on each of these portions at a time. I'm going to just going to change up my wording so I can copy everything easier. In that square brackets because I want to separate it. Those are my instructions. So we have everything from Canvas plus my instructions for it to write the novel. When you say system, what do you mean? Because Canvas has the pre-built in like Hollywood Beats, uh, Hero's Journey, Story Circle, and is Romance, I think the other one. So the only other, if you don't like those outline formats really the only thing you could do is to add some extra boxes and try to tie things in but if you have an outline method that you prefer so if i'm in canvas here with these i could add a box down here And that's just the way to add in some more portions, but you're going to have to copy those individually. Hey, you can, can you have, <clears throat> can you link those boxes, Nicole? Uh, no, not that I've seen. I've tried before and it didn't work, but you know, it likes to give me that trouble. So yeah, that's so no, it can't, or it's not working. Okay. So I would copy my outline and then I would need to copy in each of these boxes that I added. But again, these are the choices that you have. 
if you have a certain outline that method that you prefer, I would use first draft for it. I would give it, you know, my premise and tell it to write this or write this outline in the whatever format that you want in the Snyder Beat Sheet or, you know, whatever method. And they can possibly ask also the number of chapter they need. Yep. And you can play around with that inside Story Bible and the rewrite too. But again, once I promise y'all, I know y'all think we're just blowing y'all off, telling y'all to wait and waste words. I promise y'all, if y'all get into this and start playing around with a very simple story from scratch, play around and the right proper, see what all of the little things do. Let me refresh this. So my tools come back up. Play around in this part, see what the right, auto write, and all of these do. Go into Story Bible again, do that story from scratch. Once you've just gone through, you don't even need, need to do the full story. Just do go through all the boxes up through the first chapter, maybe two chapters. Once you've done that once, you have a better idea of how things work. And then your mind can comprehend, okay, well, I have this already. So how can I incorporate that into Story Bible or Pseudorite Proper? It'll really help y'all to find the workflow that works for you. All right. So now we have 504 words from that little premise. And I'm just going to start using the rewrite tools or the laser tools. I'm just looking real quick to see. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this one. Again, we started with what, 504 words, I believe it was. So I'm going to tell it I want some more conflict in this one. Start building this up. Impossible mission. I like that. And then we can start expanding on everything. You want to explain the difference between the purple letters and the white letters in the words? So the purple is what the AI is generated? No. Oh. Yes. I confused myself. The purple is... Yeah, what the AI, it's because I replaced it already. That's why I'm like, wait a minute, did they change it? Yeah, the purple is what the AI generated. The white is what was there already. And whenever you get down here, you'll see it. when I inserted it, it was purple. But as soon as I make a change to stuff, it goes white. Don't be like Nicole. Don't confuse yourself. You're doing great. Right, let's expand. I want to expand on this. So what are these laser tools? What can they do? So rewrite, as y'all have seen, rewrite, let me make sure this is done. Rewrite gives you all of these options right here for different things you can do with a phrase, a sentence, paragraph. And you could choose that customize to add in whatever you want. There is Rewrite 2.0 coming out sometime next year, towards the beginning of the year, hopefully, where we will be able to do more than 300 words because right now, let me see my words. So you see, I don't have the option to do Rewrite now, but if I get back to my less than 300, I now have the option for Rewrite. But so in Rewrite 2.0, I'm sorry, say that again. We have plugins which actually allow us more words. So with Rewrite 2.0, we will be able to do more than 300 words. We'll be able to say, so if I'm constantly using Rewrite to add more dialogue or, you know, making it have my characters be sarcastic jerks, I will in the future be able to save that prompt and just click it from a list similar to this. So that is Rewrite. Describe, we have all of the senses and the metaphors. I can toggle these off if I don't want that, you know. I always tell people to toggle off the taste. You don't want to know. Everything tastes like chicken. But typically, honestly, I just leave these on most of the time. But you can toggle these off. 
but each one is going to generate a card. So if you want to want to draw your characters into the scene, you know you have this ominous mansion, haunted place, whatever. You want to start describing your settings, all of that. Describe is what I would start with. If you like what is here, but you need more of it, that's when I tend to use expand like I just did. So I had expanded, just making sure. I had expanded this portion, this first paragraph, because I liked it, but I wanted more of it. So that's what expand does. It gave me that. So I could insert this. And let's find one to describe real quick. So we can describe a sentence, or I could describe, I want to say the park. So I just want to describe the park. I want to get more of a sense of that scene right there. And again, I have all my stuff toggled on, but I could turn it off. You know, if I know I just want the sights and maybe the sounds, I could have those on. I'm going to have it describe the park. And then it'll start giving me that visual. Oh, caught staring at a bomb. And that's the downside, because again, it doesn't know, have your character information here, but that's easily edited. So I could, I'm gonna click that and put it here after that first sentence. So now I have my site here, I can put in I just want this portion to attach it, you know, after he was smoking a cigarette right here. This is just how I start playing with it once I have the majority of my scene written or my chapter. And I just want to expand and start getting that, giving the reader that visual to start drawing them in. I start layering all of this stuff in. Taste. Cigarettes bitter, acrid, and smooth. So all of these things, you can start putting in the feelings to draw your readers in and go through. Metaphor is usually something crazy. In this instance, let's see. Its legs were scattered like thick brown wreckage and the heat from the soft caramel interior rosing gust making... Mm. Okay. It's usually useless in your novel. However, one of the fun things to do with metaphor is to bring it into mid journey and see what it creates for you. I've seen people get some really decent images out of it, especially if you're writing like a fantasy type novel or sci-fi, you can probably get some good images and use those in your social media marketing. So keep that in mind. All right, we briefly went over brainstorm, but I could have it, let's just do something real quick here. Give me a list of lines of dialogue. A bank robber would say, when he gets surrounded by the police. And I could give it some context. Thriller novel, bank robber. is a sarcastic jerk. And then I've, I had some examples. I could put it here. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Actually like a couple of these. I don't like that one, don't care for this one. 
but I do like these three. So these are things that I can now use inside my story. You know, copy these over. So if I copy them, you know, if I know I have this main character that I really want to just have these one-liners, excellent one-liners, I could keep that somewhere. I could have everything here. I could brainstorm for opening lines for my story. And again, it doesn't matter which one you go into. I'm just clicking on random ones. Opening lines for a for an epic fantasy novel. Sorry. Not too bad, not great, but not too bad. And again, if you can give it more context, it'll be closer in line with your vision. And brainstorm is excellent for, I um, always click the wrong thing. If you do lit RPG, brainstorm really excels there. So I could tell it, give me a list of magical weapons with statistics why can i not spell Just, uh, there we go and i'm going to tell it lit rpg and if again if you have an idea of something already in your novel that you have you could put it here we've had people you know ask for like potions things like that so you can do all kinds of little world building here Honestly, I, I do a lot of work inside Story Bible, but Pseudorite proper and all of these little tools, this is really whenever you can just narrow things down and start really refining everything and drawing your readers in. So we went over write, rewrite, we go here. That is something we've asked them to fix. If you notice here, I cannot go into this because you need a total of 20 words here. We have asked them to at least allow us to go into the menu. So we went over auto write, guided write, the tone shift and write settings, rewrite with all the features, the describe. I've shown you brainstorm. Y'all have seen first draft. Shrink write, I've never really used it. It's kind of like a summarizer. Manon or anybody else, do y'all have experience with shrink ray? I didn't use it much at all. Okay. Twist is one of my favorite things. So I can tell it. Um, man robs the Federal Reserve. Let's see what it gives us. Other examples of what I've done. In one class, we had a man get hit by a bus. We decided to put it in Twist. So Twist could decide, you know, whether he lives or dies. And it comes up with some crazy things sometimes. And so I'll tell you, he didn't rob the Federal Reserve, stole an ATM machine. That's not a plot twist. That's the end of the story. Okay. Turns out to be a Fed employee who attacked. That doesn't make sense. Still fun to play around with, though. Steals the money for personal use, not to help the poor. His girlfriend is a high-class call girl. After being arrested, he reveals that he was FBI. Successfully steals the money, but at the last minute, he is shot to death. So let's change this up. A man is caught. Stealing from the Federal Reserve. And you can just play around with some different things like this. Again, it's all about refining. The more refinement you do with your ideas and your words, the better your story is going to be. Okay. 
really is a government agent. Goodness, it's a lot of money. So that is twist. And that could be good too for like your mysteries. Somebody had mentioned cozy mysteries earlier. If you want to throw something in there, add something maybe unexpected. Characters, kind of similar to brainstorming. I actually don't like this as much as I prefer the brainstorming one. But you can give it a couple of characters. You do have to fill these in for your characters. And give your story's premise, and it'll give you additional characters that you can include in your story. So if you know you need a larger cast, you can start filling this out and get some extras. And you can also do that in brainstorming. Ask it for a cast of characters for an epic fantasy and, you know, Maybe give it your short story premise, a little like one sentence summary of it. And then you have poem, which I think people have actually used to do like uh, lyrics to as well. It didn't yeah, work last time. It's, I with. it's relaxing to play with that one. <laughs> I tried doing it for one of my YouTube videos and um, it wasn't working that day. I'll have to see if it works. Visualize. Let's see, let's. Let's see if we can visualize this. It's Dolly 3 and it uses 200 of your words. But this is good. A lot of times the images will come out really well for, again, social media. You can use it for your marketing and stuff. So you could always do visualize for your main characters or for a certain act in your story and use that. See, that's not, I mean, that's not bad. Not really cover worthy, but again, for a social media marketing tool, for an ad, does really well. Tweet Did song. we figure out when we insert the image to stop deleting the sentence? I'm sorry, say that again? If you want to insert the image into the pseudo right where you want it, that place, each time we do it, it kind of delete that sentence. Did you figure out a way to not delete the sentence when you insert the picture? It should. Let me see. No, it's still here. It, it might have been if you're if it's still highlighted and you click that insert, remember it's going to replace anything that's highlighted. So that might have been it. I was a little bugs, and no matter I like it or not, you keep deleting the sentence. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, you can see now I can't scroll down. Ah, uh, they're not the bugs. All right. Sorry. Sit the right team. <laughs> we'll notify them of this, but uh, let me delete that. There we go. So that was visualize again, Dolly three, and uses two hundred words. Tweet storm. Let's see what tweet storm will do for us. Really give you a tweet that you can actually advertise your book on Twitter. I had gotten some really good ones for one of my dark uh, mafia romance ones. Yeah, it, it goes from the start and give the taste to the reader to come to your book. Yeah. It's kind of cute. It's kind of useful. So it's better in the beginning and then at the end you can see it kind of just starts wrapping the story up. But me, I would combine a couple of these and give just like a little teaser of what my book is about like I really like the beginning ones you know he's a professional thief lives an uneventful life wants something more exciting gets his hands on the perfect bank heist and makes a massive payday so that I mean it needs some oomph but that's pretty good starter right there for some advertising to get people interested in your book because remember little things like this are kind of what you should be doing as you're writing your book so you're building interest in your readers so when your book is finally readily published, people have seen enough. They've decided, okay, I really like this. I want to go ahead and read this book and it'll be ready. So that's how TweetStorm can help you right there. Feedback, again, uh, it's going to just look at the information and kind of tell you areas you need to improve and things like that. But the downside is it doesn't see your whole story. So a lot of times it's going to tell you to fix things that or to add things that you already actually have and just not seeing those things at the moment. All right. 
So that is pretty much all of Pseudorite proper. Again, when we say laser tools, and I'm just repeating myself because a lot of times people say, you know, we talk in jargon and we don't mean to, but we're so used to it. So when we say laser tools, this is what we're talking about, the rewrite and describe and expand, what you see here. And then first draft, not here because the blank, let me go back to the blank one. That's not blank either. First draft is here now. So if you don't have the plugins, which if you're brand new, you likely don't, it'll say more. And then plugins is something that everybody will probably have access to by the end of the year. And there are some classes on those in that Discord course videos channel. I highly recommend checking those out. So this is where your other tools are. Your brainstorm, again, it doesn't matter which one you go into. They can all do, even though this says objects, I can ask it for a list of characters for an epic fantasy novel. Context, a, let's say young adult fantasy novel. Featuring a runaway princess. So we did this in class the other day. A chosen one, prophecy, and two dragons. So even though this one, I, the one I went to was all about objects, I'm asking for characters, putting that information in, and it'll still work. So it really doesn't matter which one you go into, but they all give you ideas. And then, of course, the auto write, guided write, and all that settings. For your documents here, we went over how you can rename them. Clicking here, I can change it here. Click down out of it, and it's going to change all of that. I can move these around however I want. Something else I like to do whenever I'm doing my series planning is I will use the underscores and I'm going to duplicate it So now these lines I could take, this is useful in my series. So if I want to separate, I might have my plot up here, my world building, my characters. So these lines just help me separate everything. So then I have all of my story information in these docs and it just makes it a little bit easier to read. You can actually put emojis in the titles as well. So just a little organization tip for y'all. Hey, do y'all have any questions on anything before I stop the recording? How could did you, I delete? Could you just please uh, explain again how to access the video? The no. Discord course videos? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in our Discord, the Pseudorite Discord, go to the question mark and click to join the Discord. And you'll it'll ask you some questions like what genres you write in, that opens up some extra channels for you. And then once you are in Discord, there's a channel right here called Course Videos. So we have our announcements, you know, where it talks about like the new model system coming, and then down here, the course videos, and then places that you can go to ask for help. But you're in the course videos, just click on whichever one you think you want to watch, and you can watch it right here. Thank you. You're welcome. So again, for y'all that missed it, just the question mark in your profile and join the Discord. All right, well, thank y'all all for hanging out with me for 
these past two hours. And again, tomorrow I will be doing the 201 where we will go into Story Bible and do a story there from scratch. And then the 301 will be Wednesday and John Creason will be here entertaining y'all. All right, thank y'all very much, everyone. Bye.